So next we need to change it so that instead of moving both of the rackets, we can just move one at a time. So we're going to create another variable that's going to keep track of which one of the things counts as up and down. So we're going to create this public string. So a string is basically just a series of letters. And it's whatever is between two double quotes. So the letters for vertical here are what make up this string. So I'm going to go into C Sharp, go into Visual Studio, and alter the C Sharp code. Public string, all lowercase, axis equals, and then in double quotes, vertical. So now I need to actually alter what these project settings are. So I'm going to go in and do edit project settings input and change what the vertical axis actually means. One other thing I need to do is to change this thing here so it uses this variable instead. So I'm going to erase out everything between those parentheses and say axis instead. So we need to alter our input so that we are getting two different inputs, one for the left and one for the right. So we're going to go under Edit, Project Settings, Input, and change this particular one to be just S and W. So if I go under Edit, Project Settings, Input, under Vertical, I'm going to change this to S and this to W and erase these two out. And then I wanted to use just Joystick 1 for this. So next, I need to add in some sort of input for the other direction. So I'm going to increase the size by 1 and change that input to vertical 2 and give it a vertical 2 name and down and up joystick 2. This very last one here, we're going to call this vertical 2. Change the negative button to down. Positive button to up, erase this, basically keep all of these same settings here. Three, three, snap, x axis, joystick two. So now I need to go in and set this axis setting to be at vertical and vertical two for the different paddles. This one's already vertical. Change this one to vertical too. All right. So W and S seem to work. Up and down seem to work. And away we go. All right, finally, we get to the ball that moves around the room. So I'm going to go get that particular object, the sprite for it. So I'm going to save it into the assets folder. Same sort of things as we had before, pixels per unit. It's going to be point. This thing, pixel per unit one, point. We're going to drag it into the screen. Oh, yes, apply. So we're going to use something called a physics material to have the collider bounce off of things. So first, we need to actually create a new thing that's going to be in the assets area, and it's going to be a physics material. So create physics material 2D. And I'm going to call this ball material. Then we're just going to take this ball material, which has zero friction and one bounciness, and drag it into the material slot in the ball's collider. Whoops, looks like I forgot to add a ball 2D collider. So let's do that. Ball, at component, physics 2D, ball collider. And then there's this material here. I'm going to take this and drag the ball material into there.
This sort of thing often happens where you will have one inspector open and you need to drag another one into it. And it's actually creating a series of links under the hood that allows it to know what these things are. For the ball to move, we need to give it a rigid body 2D, which gives it the physics we need. So the ball is still selected, add component, physics 2D, rigid body. It's going to have a very small mass, a very small angular drag, so that it basically acts like there's no other forces acting on it. And we don't want it to rotate. We're going to use interpolate and continuous collision detection again. And then we're going to create some behaviors for it in a second here. So that stays the same, 0.0001, no gravity, continuous, interpolate. We're going to create a new script for the ball to move around, and we're going to actually have it use this start method. Add component, new script, create an add. I'm going to move this into the scripts folder and then alter that. Just need the starting area. And I technically don't need that particular comment. So what we're going to be altering is the velocity of this particular ball object. So we're going to try moving it just to the right and left to begin with. So we need to get the component of the rigid body 2D, the velocity of it, and set it to be basically a vector to the right with a speed. So this is basically a pre-built unit vector to the right. So it's got an x of 1 and a y of 0. That's just automatically pre-built into Unity. I'm going to need the speed value as well. Public float speed is 30. And now I need to get the rigid body's velocity. with the parentheses after it, dot velocity is vector 2 dot right times speed, semicolon. Ah, oh, yes. I have to make sure that there's a lowercase b. Well, that was exciting briefly. It bounced into the racket. I have to make sure I remember to add the bounciness to the ball material. Otherwise, it's not going to bounce off. There we go. 